In the future, a time comes when women are offered a unique opportunity to conceive and give birth to a child using mobile artificial wombs in the form of eggs. Don't say a pod. Say a baby. You are completely tuned to the pod. Near future scenario. A young woman wakes up in her apartment. Her home AI immediately activates the coffee maker and informs Rachel of the good news about the improvement in her digestive health. It suggests an appropriate outfit for the day and reminds her of her visit to the capsule center. Rachel wakes up her husband, Elvie, to wish him a good morning and say goodbye before heading to work. The AI now advises Elvie on his outfit for the day and informs him that his happiness index has slightly increased. He receives a prepared breakfast and heads to the home greenhouse. Meanwhile, Rachel arrives at work, where today there is a presentation of a new generation of cognitive assistants called Our Machines, which are soon to become new cognitive supervisors. After the meeting, Rachel is invited by her supervisor, who is concerned about the possibility of her expanding her family as they intend to offer her a promotion. Additionally, the corporation is willing to provide funding for the services of the uterus center, which Rachel appreciates. Following this, Rachel continues her workday when she receives a call from the uterus. There have been changes in their lists and a spot is opened up which the center can offer her. They schedule a visit and Rachel settles into a relaxing chair, dreaming about her future child. During this time her husband conducts a class in the botanical garden where he shows students a fig fruit that he managed to grow naturally. He offers the young people a taste but they view the fruit with disgust. Finally, one brave soul tries it. Meanwhile, Rachel shares the joyful news with her colleague and friend Alice and confesses that she hasn't told her husband about her visit to the center. Because of this, she has to consult her robot psychoanalyst to whom she admits that her husband is very distant from her as he is fixated on the natural world, which translates into his desire to have a child conceived, carried, and born naturally. The AI seeks an answer to the question of why this child would be considered natural, while one gestated in a capsule would not. What distinguishes them? and Rachel is at a loss, unable to find the differences. Later she and her friend go out for lunch, and while inhaling the pleasant aromas Rachel agrees that she should talk to her husband about everything. She finds her husband watching a relaxing program, and he talks about his day. Elvie is disheartened by the fact that the younger generation doesn't know how to interact with nature because no one taught them. At some point, people decided that nature was just a commodity, and that's when everything began to fall apart. The next day, Rachel goes to the uterus center, where she and others discuss how, when the birth rate dropped to zero, their newly established center took on the task of solving the problem. Women didn't want to have children because it was inconvenient for them. The center wants them to live full lives and pursue their dreams without being distracted by children. The director of the center, Linda, welcomes the gathering and is ready to share the latest technological advancements. Humans have always managed to control nature, so why shouldn't women take control of childbirth? Linda gives a tour of the center, showing the capsule developed by scientists in which the baby grows. If parents don't have time to interact they can always play music, audiobooks, or educational podcasts for the baby. Through an app, they can feed the child and monitor its development. One significant advantage is that children in the capsule are not exposed to viruses or toxins. The capsules operate autonomously for 48 hours. The fetus inside can hear everything happening around, so it's advisable for the mother to talk to the baby. After the discussion, Linda reminds Rachel of the need to make a deposit, but Rachel intends to talk to her husband first. Upon returning home, she confesses her intention to Elvie to have a child with the help of the uterus center, which upsets him. Not only did she make such an important decision on her own, but she also went to the center without him. Rachel apologizes, and the couple reconciles. Rachel suggests to Elvie, that they talk to Alice and her husband, and the family goes to visit them. Alice, enthusiastically, discusses the opportunity for women to have a child without experiencing pain, suffering, or body changes. Meanwhile, her husband demonstrates a special belt for carrying the egg capsule, to which LV looks quite skeptical. He categorically refuses to hold the capsule. At home, he can't shake the feeling that the egg is made of plastic, Rachel assures him that the child will perceive it as a real maternal womb, but Elvie remains unwavering. It's hard for him to accept that the child will be packaged in plastic. The wife suggests that he visit her robot psychotherapist. Although he initially takes offense at this advice, he eventually decides to go. However, after listening to the AI's advice, the man realizes that they completely misunderstand each other. Upon returning home and discussing the evolution that led humanity to grow children in capsules, he agrees to his wife's proposal because he understands how important it is to her. The next day they go to the center, and although now a child can be made from any material, 
Rachel announces that Elvie will be the biological father. She allows nature to determine the child's gender. Linda leads them to a room where on a large screen, future parents can witness the moment of conception. Later, they are brought a container with a fertilized zygote so they can admire it. The couple later informs Rachel's parents about the upcoming event. Rachel's father suggests that LV sell his countryside house since they never go there, but the man vehemently opposes the idea. While the capsule remains at the center, the future parents continue their usual lives. The day comes when the program connects Rachel to the capsule, and even though nothing can be heard from inside yet, she starts selecting music for the baby. At one point, she tries to see the baby, but she is told that it is kept in complete darkness until seven weeks. Then one of the capsules sends a signal, it's time for birth. Even though everything is programmed, the baby doesn't always arrive at the appointed time. Soon Rachel starts having strange dreams, which she confides to her psychoanalyst, but the AI convinces her that dreams are unreliable material for analysis. After six weeks of pregnancy when the baby's heartbeat is detectable, Linda allows them to take the capsule home. For the first time she shows them the baby. On that day, Rachel prepares the kids' room, and Elvie brings an olive tree sapling. However his wife suggests replacing it with a hologram, and the offended husband takes the tree away, promising to plant it in their countryside house, which Rachel once again suggests selling. She just doesn't understand why they should go somewhere when they have everything for a good life here, but Elvie refuses to raise the child among plastic. The next day Rachel meets a pregnant woman in the pool, who allows her to listen to her baby's movements, filling her with delight. In the evening she moves the capsule to their bedroom because they want to spend as much time as possible with the future child. However Elvie feels uncomfortable with intimacy while the baby is present, so they move the capsule to baby's room. It immediately signals hunger, and the parents rush to feed their offspring. Sometime later they go on a tour to the center to prepare for parenting. Linda shows prospective parents the play areas where children play and answers their questions. The government no longer funds education but the center teaches programming and logic to the little ones. In one of the rooms children engage in creative activities, or rather, a computer does the work, and the children provide feedback. One of the parents asks about the dreams the children have, but Linda reassures him. Dreams are excluded from the fetal development program because they do not carry any useful information. One day, LV is in his greenhouse when he hears the capsule signal. He feeds the baby, but then decides to communicate with it while Rachel receives a warning about her declining productivity. Her husband is trying on the capsule holder and takes pride in his success. Now he carries the capsule with him, reading books to the baby, posing riddles, showing his plants, and falling asleep beside it. At work, he suggests to the visitors to hug a tree and experience its calming effect on the human mind. His supervisor congratulates him on the upcoming joyful event and suggests replacing the live plants in the greenhouse with holographic images as growing real trees is too expensive, but LV becomes furious and rejects the proposal. At home, the family watches a movie about penguins and the man starts crying when he learns about the dedication of the birds. Worried Rachel suggests returning the capsule to the center as other parents do. That's when LV reveals that he brought the capsule to work. Rachel shares this with her colleagues. She is concerned about her husband's close interaction with the egg. However, the women encourage her to be happy about it. After all, the father is immediately bonding with the future child. Rachel continues to have strange dreams and her pregnant friend reassures her that it's normal for expectant mothers. One day, Rachel dreams of herself with a baby bump, and she enjoys it. The woman also begins to devote all her attention to the capsule, especially after Elvie's mother sent them an old book about the benefits of parental closeness, but this starts to worry Rachel, and the couple goes to a psychoanalyst. Finding a balance is challenging because everything revolves around the child. Rachel is jealous of Elvie because he spends more time with the baby than she does. After all, she is the mother and should feel the baby. After listening to their argument, the AI asks for permission to connect to the capsule because it cannot take sides. The next day, Rachel takes the capsule to work. However, she behaves distractedly, giving the baby too much attention. Alice suggests placing the egg in a specially designated area where other future mother's capsules are stored because Rachel is becoming a distracting mother. Alice's capsule is kept at the center because it's more convenient for her. In the evening, Rachel, taking the capsule, hurries to the center for a parenting seminar, after which Linda suggests leaving the baby in the incubation area. The family reluctantly complies with the demand. The house becomes empty, and both the husband and wife miss their capsule. One day Rachel dreams of a seaside where she walks with the baby in her arms. 
She wakes up in tears and moves Elvie's little tree to the kids' room, surprising her husband. Meanwhile at work, her boss is not entirely satisfied with her productivity, but Rachel assures her that everything is fine. Later, Linda informs them that the delivery day will be next Wednesday, as deliveries now occur on the 39th week. They can't afford babies being born earlier or later, as the capsules are in high demand. Parents must receive oxytocin, the love hormone, to prepare for the baby's arrival. However, the family shocks the director with a request to allow them to take the capsule home before delivery, even though it goes against the rules. Moreover, important personality development seminars are held every day. Linda suggests they take special tablets to regulate the baby's sleep, which greatly helps parents. The couple leaves, passing through protesting women against the capsules. Suddenly, L.V. returns and, taking advantage of the midwife being occupied with another patient, retrieves his capsule without permission. That night, Rachel dreams that she is buying her baby at a store, and they offer her a deal, two for the price of one. Upon waking up, she wakes her husband and asks him to take her to their countryside home to give birth in nature. L.V. rushes to the center and informs Linda that they intend to give birth at home, however the director is strongly against it. The capsule is very expensive, and they cannot take risks, so they must return the egg as soon as possible. Nevertheless, the family leaves for their coastal home. Rachel enjoys the surrounding nature, starting to understand her husband. They walk in the forest together and plant an olive tree. They often sit by the sea with the capsule until one night it turns off. In a panic, Rachel suggests calling the center, but her husband reminds her that they still have 48 hours, and they must trust the child. They are awakened by the onset of labor, requiring a code to be entered, but they can't figure it out. So LV grabs a hammer. He opens the capsule and retrieves a beautiful, healthy baby. The happy parents embrace him. Early in the morning, Rachel puts the capsule in a box, takes it to the post office and sends it back to the center. She then returns home where her husband and son are sleeping on the bed. The creators of the film portrayed the absurdity of a possible social evolution quite delicately. Nothing terrible happened, people just became so lazy that they forgot about the joys of life. Why go out of town when you can visit a capsule garden where you lie down and inhale the sense of